I'm just showing you this. Again, thinking back to what I talked before, these are the. This is something I, I have to tell you. It's sort of your defense. The only defense that the human body has, if if I decided to drink some methyl alcohol, or I drank some methyl alcohol by accident, and I went to the hospital, the first thing they would do to me, which and some people find this pleasurable, I guess, would be get me drunk. The only way to cure methyl alcohol poisoning, and this comes in later on, is to use ethyl alcohol, drinking alcohol, and to keep the person drunk. Because if you do that, the ethyl alcohol takes up the spot on the enzyme that, is, that can convert methyl alcohol to formaldehyde and keeps it from happening. Okay? This fascinating thing about this, the fascinating thing about this, is this is where you've heard all, the, all of these diseases that I mentioned, not all of them, but most of them, are associated with what we call the U-shaped curve of alcohol consumption. You know, your doctor, if you have a heart problem, will say, you know, I hate to tell you this, but it's sort of, it's been proven that if you have one alcoholic drink a day, you'll have a third of the chance of getting atherosclerosis, heart disease, as those poor bastards that don't drink alcohol at all. They don't want to tell you that. They don't like to use that bad word. But the truth is that people who don't consume alcohol are prone two to three times more than other people to get diseases like atherosclerosis, you know, multiple MS. Um, the whole list of diseases is about 20 diseases now. And they can never figure out why does ethanol protect you? Well, it keeps your body from turning methanol to formaldehyde. The places I said it's not alcohol dehydrogenase is not found everywhere. It's only found in a handful of places. But those places are where all the diseases of civilization start. The exact sites where they start. Okay, the brain. Your doctor will tell you there's no alcohol dehydrogenase in the brain, but he hasn't read the literature deep enough. There is alcohol dehydrogenase in the brain, but in the veins, and the lining of the veins in the brain, and other vessels of the brain. And I'll show you that. I'm going to show you this, that exactly. The retina of the eyes, MS, that has these, all these strange visual symptoms associated with multiple sclerosis, uh, blindness, recurring blindness, alcohol dehydrogenase. It's called retinase when it's in the eye. Because again, the blood vessels and other organs, the blood vessels and the, of course, the order and all that is what where you get the atherosclerosis. In the skin, there are things called fibroblasts in your skin that are place. That's the place where basal cell carcinoma starts, where myelinoma starts, and these fibroblasts are loaded with alcohol dehydrogenase. The breasts, and this is really serious. The breasts, the woman's breasts. Um, the epithelial cells that actually produce the milk are loaded with alcohol dehydrogenase. And the terrible thing is, there's another enzyme that helps protect people from formaldehyde. It's called aldehyde dehydrogenase. The breast cell, for some reason, has none of this. So methanol is particularly important in causation relative to breast cancer. And I'll show you, some, I'll show you the, the data I have. The pancreas, the kidneys, the liver, the thyroid, the, unfortunately, the fetus. Okay, this is just, I'm showing, I'm showing two sources of methanol. I'm showing the two most important sources of methanol in our human lifestyles. One is, oh, that's changing. One is diet soda. Diet Coke, Zero Coke, whatever you want to call it, or other diet products. There are 6,000 products containing aspartame in New Zealand. 6,000. 951, stay away from it. Your life depends on it. And cigarette smoke. Well, we know that cigarette smoke causes a lot of diseases, causes all these diseases I'm talking about. Well, what is the component in cigarette smoke that causes this? Why haven't they concentrated on finding? It's only 4,000 components there. They could, you know, the money they're spending on some of these diseases, we know for sure that MS is caused. That's the only thing they agree on. 
Smoking causes MS. It's causal. Well, the most toxic component of cigarette smoke is methyl alcohol. Okay. I'm just going to show you this. Uh, it's, it's important for Alzheimer's. It's important for atherosclerosis. It's important to, uh, for MS. The, the alcohol dehydrogenase that's found in the lining of the blood vessels and so, okay, just go through real fast. Basically, this if this if this vessel was in the brain, this thin layer of cells, it's like the the tile on a on a on a tunnel. Uh, when you're crossing a tunnel through a mountain in Europe, and they have these beautiful white tiles. Well, the the these tiles are are tissue are cells. This this these cells constitute the blood brain barrier. They're really tight together in the brain, and so it keeps a lot of things from dangerous substances from getting into the brain. Methanol, the smallest alcohol, one carbon, it passes through with no problem. Now formaldehyde can't pass through, cannot pass through, it's too reactive. The only way to get formaldehyde in the brain, the only way is by using the Trojan horse, methyl alcohol. No other way. And how it happens is, is interesting. The methanol passes through the blood-brain barrier, it hits the media, the intima and the media, and there it's, that's exactly where the alcohol dehydrogenase is. We don't know why it's there. It varies from one person to another tremendously. Okay, we always find it associated with atherosclerosis, always. So what happens? The methanol gets through the blood-brain barrier, hits an alcohol dehydrogenase, converts into formaldehyde. And that formaldehyde starts leaching out of that vessel. It starts leaching out of the vessel to do damage. Or in, within the lining of the vessel, it can make contact with an LDL, low-density lipoprotein. That's what your doctor says you must stay away from. It can change that LDL in such a way, and this is what formaldehyde does. It changes the protein of components of your body in such a way that it activates the immune system. All the, all the white blood cells that are involved in cleaning out, cleaning your body, removing parts that don't work, removing bacteria, they all have a site that's specific to formaldehyde modified protein. So when the protein is changed by formaldehyde, that macrophage eats it. And that's why for years, for 100, 150 years, scientists have been looking through their microscope. And what do they see when they look at MS? They see myelin that's being eaten by these white blood cells. And they say, well, it must be the crazy white blood cells. They've gone mad. The pharmaceutical companies wage a war against white blood cells that are doing just what they were made to do devour formaldehyde-modified protein. They can't see the formaldehyde-modified protein until recently. And, and I show in the book that when they looked for formaldehyde-modified protein in MS, they found it. They didn't know what they were looking for. They didn't know why, but they found it. But this is how the, these diseases are classified as immune diseases. You know, formaldehyde changes your protein so that it's going to be eaten by white blood cells. Okay, there are only two ways to get formaldehyde into the human breast. This was supposed to be the trigger for me to tell you about the human breast and the cells that, uh, you know, you can't get formaldehyde into those epithelial cells, but you can get methanol into those cells. It'll turn into formaldehyde in the cell, and there you go. Methylation of DNA in cells is a major cause of cancer. And what causes methylation? Formaldehyde. Okay, just to give you some idea of what your doctor doesn't know about formaldehyde, formaldehyde has two faces. It has, and this is a little scientific, okay? Basically, it's bipolar. Formaldehyde is bipolar. It has two different personalities. One we'll call an acid personality, the other a basic personality. 
in both cases, it's extremely vicious. It's very reactive. In the most common case, in the human body, the methanol, I mean the formaldehyde, 99% of formaldehyde becomes acidic because it combines with water. And it has two extremely reactive sites on either side, just like a, just like a crazy hawk or a crazy bird. And it wants to grab onto proteins with each side. It's so reactive that when you combine formaldehyde, when you make a solution of formaldehyde in water, if you let it sit, it'll actually turn into a plastic and drop down to the bottom. This is what happens. The two different personalities grab a hold of each other. You know, the very aggressive acid form grabs a hold of the rear end of the, of the basic form, and then another acid form attaches to the other side, and you make a bridge. And this bridge this bridge is what they discovered causes the tangles in Alzheimer's. What's a tangle? Okay. In Alzheimer's, we have a beautiful protein, a very beautiful basic protein. That's important because it's the acid personality, the formaldehyde, that attacks the protein, tau protein. So what happens in Alzheimer's? In the axon of your nerve cells, there's this tau protein that has an important function. It's attacked by, it can be attacked by formaldehyde. This is research from uh, Scotland and China in the last seven years or eight years ago. I've been in communication in this, uh, with these scientists. Okay. They found that they could take in the laboratory this tau protein, attach, or just introduce a very small amount of formaldehyde. The formaldehyde attaches to sites on the protein, and then the formaldehyde attached, forms those bridges, and then those bridges become sticky, and they cause the tau protein to form tangles. And these are how the tangles in Alzheimer's are produced. And so this has been discovered. These scientists said this is interesting because formaldehyde can't get into the brain. How do we get formaldehyde in the brain to do this? Well, you know how it's done. And to prove it, these are cross-section of the veins of the brain of a person who is just beginning to get Alzheimer's. We're cutting right through the vessels of the brain. There's the plaque formation. Tight around tight around the vessel. The formaldehyde is seeping out of the vessel, causing the tau protein to form tangles, and it's perivascular. It's a perivascular disease. How else could it happen unless something was oozing out of the vessel? Formaldehyde. Okay, that's Alzheimer's. My second biggest concern is autism, because you know how autism has become an extremely important disease. In fact, just a few, a few, about a month ago, the Center for Disease Control says now autism occurs in one in 80 births. One in 80 births. Where the hell is it coming?